it will slide off the prismatic bar and it will strike this bottom flange. So this is my weight and this is at a distance or at a height of h from the top part of this bottom flange. Right. So the total distance between this is say is equal to L. Right. Now the whole concept of dynamic loading is that if we leave this for uh, weight and we allow it to fall under gravity then the whole potential energy that this body has due to its configuration will be converted to some kind of a kinetic energy right so at the point of impact essentially this body will acquire some velocity right but in case of static loading we have seen that there was no velocity as such the body was subjected to but here at the point of contact this body will acquire some velocity and strike this and now we will try to explore whether this velocity is going to have any effect on the calculation of strain energy. Now let us assume that there is also a deflection here and the dynamic loading is different in case than static loading in the fact that the body strikes here with a definite velocity, right? Whereas in case of static loading, the body didn't strike with any velocity at all, right? So it was a case of equilibrium maintained at every stage. So let us assume that this deflection is suppose delta dy or deflection due to dynamic loading. Now we have seen that deflection due to static loading is essentially delta st is equal essentially if, if, if w is the weight that pulls the prismatic bar then it will be equal to wl by a. Now delta dy how can we find it out? Now at this point essentially equilibrium will be maintained. So the whole potential energy of this body that is w into h plus delta dy is equal to the strain energy stored in the body that is we have said is equal to a e delta dy here I am writing delta dy because this is deflection due to dynamic loading by 2L so I got to solve this quadratic equation now and now I can say that this is equal to delta dy whole squared by 2 is equal to WL by AE uh, H plus delta dy I can also write this as in the form of delta dy whole squared by 2 into delta ST because WL by AE is essentially delta ST H plus delta dy and I can write simply in the form of a quadratic equation this equation as minus 2 delta dy into delta st and uh, this will be my minus delta st into h is equal to 0. So we can solve this out we will find out that delta dy is essentially equal to delta dy is essentially equal to let us write it here delta dy is essentially equal to minus b that is minus of uh, minus 2 delta st that is plus 2 delta st plus minus minus will ignore d squared that is minus 2 delta st whole squared that is 4 delta st whole squared minus 4 into a that is 1 into c that is delta st into h right so it will be 2 sorry so it will be plus delta st into h by 2 and essentially this 2 and this 2 gets cancels out and this 4 if I bring it on this side so this becomes 2 so it also cancels out so essentially what I'm left is essentially this right so delta st is the same delta dy is essentially delta st plus delta st whole squared plus delta st into 2h right and let us write this equation on the top What we have is here delta deflect due to dynamic loading is equal to delta due to static loading plus delta st whole squared plus delta st into 2h. Now it's pretty clear that h is very 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 large than delta st that the that is the delta due to static loading and essentially therefore this delta dy will be equal to delta st into 2h. And h is equal to what? 
basically we have this potential energy to be converted to whole kinetic energy at this point and at this point let us suppose the velocity is v so half into w by g into v squared is equal to nothing but w by g into g into h that is gg cancels out so essentially this will be equal to v squared by 2gh so 2h so v squared by 2g that is essentially delta st into v squared by g from here it's pretty clear that the deflection due to dynamic loading is equal to root over of delta st into v squared by g and delta st can again be substituted